right, guys, what is up? It is your least favorite bottle vlogger, Brian636 here. Coming live from Misguided Motorsports here in the heart of Chicago, Illinois. Today is the first episode of The Limiter. What the hell is The Limiter, Brian, you might ask? It's gonna be a talk show, a Q&A session, a place where you guys can call in, I can have guests, you review videos, pretty much your all-in-one stop for the stunt community to get informed and pretty much us have our own show. Today, I'm not gonna have any call-ins or guests just because we don't have the software for it at the moment. We will get there in the next couple of weeks and I can't wait to have some of you guys call in. But for now, I did ask for a couple of crash videos on my Instagram as well as some questions and answers for our Q&A segment, which I'm super excited to get to because you guys are a bunch of clowns and always love giving me some good stuff, whether it's crashes or questions or just whatever. So today we're gonna be reviewing some videos and answering some of your questions. Let's get into it. Zach Alessi, I think I pronounced your name right, man. I don't know. Asks, do you think stunts you learn on a Grom will translate to a bigger bike? Now, Zach, firsthand, I've seen this a thousand times in Chicago over the past three, four years, watching guys transition from Groms to big bikes, and it seems absolutely seamless. Myself, uh, when we were learning how to stunt, you know, seven, eight years ago, that wasn't an option. You either learned on a little 50cc pit bike with drum brakes that didn't have a clutch, or you learned on a big bike. So we didn't really have the option of that. So of course I just went big bike. But after seeing so many of these young guys come up doing no handers and circles and learning all the basics on your Grom, including balance point, and then transitioning to a big bike, whether it is six months, one year, two years later, it seems like it's pretty seamless, man. And I don't know how it wouldn't be. It has a clutch, it's set up just like a regular big motorcycle with a foot brake and it's got disc brakes. It is a mini motorcycle. So I think that helps with the transition. So yes, I do think that's a good idea for you to do, my guy. Star Stunts underscore 636, I like your username, asks, how do you set your idle for stunt riding, 0304? So for the 0304, and this is a question that is different per bike, um, in case you're wondering, but for the 0304, I feel like the sweet spot for in the streets is 3,000, and I feel like that sweet spot for in the lot is right around 3,500. I think that's a good amount of engine brake and engine power that you can go into circles without fighting the engine too much when you're slowing down on those circles. And that 3,000 in the streets will allow you to really drop back and not stall your bike. So I've always run that, you know, everyone's gonna tell you a little bit differently. When I'm doing my no-handers in the streets though, and this is gonna freak some people out, I put it at anywhere from nine to 10,000 RPM. So when I'm doing a no-hander in like third or fourth or fifth gear on the highway and sitting there, there on a sit down, it's normally at that 9,000 RPM mark, but that's just the power needed to let that bike continue to move without being on the gas. Good question, Star Stunts. Obviously, you guys, 636, change the oil on that damn thing and be kind to her because they're a dying breed. We're gonna do one more of these questions and answers before we get on to some of these crash videos, which are freaking insane. I don't know how some of you guys survived these. Uh, Shane underscore Compton asks, why do you not do sponsored videos? Well, Shane, <laughs> there's a lot of reasons. I think that there's, a hesitation on my front of not wanting to work with companies that I don't feel represent our lifestyle, our community. And on top of that, there's also hesitation from companies themselves of do we really want to partner with a stunt rider in the first place? This is not a, you know, mom and dad vlog channel. This is, you know, a channel covering some pretty insane stuff. If you, you know, from the outside looking in, it looks crazy. I know to us, it's not as crazy, but um, so I, I do have some some problems picking up sponsorships every now and then. However, I do turn down quite a lot of them too. I don't do the video game apps. I don't do established titles. I don't do all these you know, weird random ones. I do ones that I feel like are actual good products. Few and far in between do I find a company that I actually wanna work with. All right, so the moment you guys all came here for. Let's check out some of these crashes. Some of these are from my friends. Some of these are from people that I have never seen before. And a lot of these crashes I've never seen posted before either. So you're probably gonna be watching them for the first time with me. The first guy we're gonna check out today is my guy Krill from South Sweden, I believe you are, my friend. Uh, he's an absolute beast. And as soon as I asked for crash videos, he sent me this one. It looks like he's on a Harley Davidson Dyna of some sort. Yeah, I think it's a Dyna with a two to one and a, and a seat and a lot of your other basic stunt parts on it. So let's go ahead and click play. He's gonna sit down wheelie. He jumped up to seat stander. Holy shit, he jumps up the seat stander and uh, I think he forgot that that bike does not have a handbrake on it because as soon as he jumped up to seat stander, it appears like he just jumped off of it. So sit down, up the seat stander. He came up the seat stander. It, Went a little bit to the left, got a little bit wobbly on him there. And uh, I guess he just decided to ditch it. 
I don't know how the bike made out or how my guy made out there, but it looks like the bike like traveled really safely into the grass. It probably didn't even get a nick on it. Curl, I hope you're all good, <laughs> my dude, but that's crazy. So a lot of the Dyna guys, if you didn't know, they don't run handbrakes, and that's uh, true for the guys that do ride them in Sweden, for the few amount that do ride them in Sweden as well. They don't have handbrakes, and I think Krill is used to riding handbrake bikes, so he probably jumped up the seat stander and realized, holy fuck, I'm not on my supermoto. That's the best case scenario, though. His bike went into the grass really well. It looks like he's on one of those deserted roads out there, and I hope you're all good, my friend. That was pretty wild. Next up, we have my friend Dom with a Grom. And today, Dom is not on a Grom. Dom appears, before we even start this video, to be on a 2003, 2004, 636. See what he's got going on. He is at the lot practicing some new tricks, I'm sure, straight line. Starts off in a seat stander with a foot in a hole, drop down the double knee. You don't see too many people drop down the double knee anymore. I used to do that a whole lot more, but I just find myself not doing it as much. So, drops down a double knee, goes from double knee to jump into, what is that, a sit down spreader, my guy? A sit down spreader with a, what the? Man, what are you doing? He jumped into a sit down spreader. I think he meant to jump into the tank, but his body told him to go into the seat. It looks like he didn't cover the handbrake or the foot brake whatsoever and totally went scorpion on this thing. Yeah, something tells me he's gonna get sent to the moon here. And yeah, to the moon. That was like a half scorpion, half mouse trap. Yeah. All bad, man. I really hope you you walked away from that one okay. As soon as uh, the crash really starts to happen, the camera flies away from you when your body's hitting the ground. So I hope you're okay there, man. Dom with a Grom, you're a beast, but that was wild. The sit-down spreader, one of my favorite tricks. I love it. 4-4 <laughs> <laughs> Mateo sent us in a video. I, I don't think I've ever ridden with you, my guy. It looks like you're out in California on a KTM 450 in the streets on some knobbies, and we're just rocking back in a sit-down. Rocking back. Whoa! What the hell was that? My guy's in a sit down, sit down, sit down, and then all of a sudden the foot brake becomes not a thing and the right foot just flies away from it. Let's watch that again. Are, are you learning? Are you just learning balance point? Cause it looks like you're right at balance point, balance point, balance point, and you're hitting the foot brake. And then you come back to hit the foot brake there. Oh, that's a classic brake fade there, my people. He definitely knows what he's doing. Now that I'm watching this video a little bit slower, he knows what he's doing. That looks like brake fade. That looks like he didn't have Motul 600 or 660. Hold that thought. <sighs> so I personally think that this crash could have been avoided by simply running this with some steel lines, man. I think this whole thing could have been avoided. He's definitely rocking back. He's beasting it and he just goes to hit that foot brake and he hits it and he really hits it and nothing happens. So he bails right off it and bails right off the back. Yeah, just comes right back, bends the fender and yeah. That's no fun, man. Run good brake fluid, people. Stop running AutoZone.2.3.4. It doesn't have a high boiling point. This shit will save your life, you know? When we're talking about doing stunt riding, and shit, don't cheap out and run the rubber lines and the stock brake fluid that's been in there for 20 years or whatever they put in from the factory. Get a high boiling point, get the steel lines, and don't brake rape either. I mean, because brake raping is, uh, is not fun either, you know, just constantly riding it and riding it and riding it. Thank you for sending that in, Mateo. I hope you're doing okay, man, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name all right as well. Oh, M-A-T-E-U. Next up, we have Jaquilin Barone. Right from the get-go, it looks like he's gonna be on a Harley Davidson Sportster of some sort, and maybe in a bridge in New York? I don't know, it looks kind of familiar. Let's go ahead and watch this video together, boys. Yep, it is a 1200, I believe. It's a current model sporty, and man, is my guy dragging. That is sick. Uh, I think he does have a 12 bar on there. I don't think that's just a built fender. Wow. Yeah, he's putting a lot of weight back on that 12 bar. Going super deep, man. <laughs> Let's watch that again, guys. So he's coming back, putting a lot of weight, a lot of weight on it. And uh, I think I got a good idea of what happened here. Yeah, a lot of weight on the 12 bar. Let's watch this last one where things go wrong. A whole bunch of weight comes back. My guy is at like, I don't know, 12, 30, one o'clock. And he's on the foot brake at the same time. So you got to think your wheel is right here. Your 12 bar is right here because this has happened to me before. If you come too far back on your 12 bar and you're on the brake at the same time when your wheel comes off the ground, even by a millimeter, and you're on the brake and that fucking wheel stops for that, for that millisecond of a time, when you come back down off that 12 bar, that back wheel is stopped. So you're going from 45 miles an hour to nothing. So it's gonna result in a mousetrap. Let's watch it. Wa-boom! Mousetrap right into the middle of 
a bridge in, I'm guessing, New York. It looks like the East Coast because we don't have those double-decker bridges here in the Midwest. Uh, maybe they do out in Cali, but I'm going to take a wild guess that this is somewhere on the East Coast. Named underscore Daniel. That was gnarly, man. I hope you're all right. Coming from a fellow sporty rider, I know your pain. I've almost been chucked off my sporty in the same exact way. Yeah, just barely come back on that 12 bar when we come back. You already know this. It's easy for it to happen, but I hope you're all right, brother. That That's a gnarly one. I know you're in second or third gear. Hope you're all right, my guy. Let's do one more of these, huh? All right, guys, our last video comes from Matt Can't Stunt out of Washington. Today, it looks like he's on an OG Grum, and he's on a staggered wheelie right from the get-go. I think I know what he's going for by reaching his left hand over to the right. He's going for a switch hand throttle. Um, I love doing these on the street myself. Goes for that. As soon as he starts taking off that right hand, though, I think he senses something's too wrong. Now, when you go onto one of these switch hands, a lot of guys think you should just lock your wrist in that exact position of where it is at that exact point. A lot of times that can be too little, but other times it can be too much. And I think my guy locked the throttle at too much and just went straight back because that's what it looks like. It looks like he went to hit the brake, things got a little bit too wobbly, and uh, he just ditched it hard left. I would suggest, man, in the future, it doesn't have to be locked like that. You know, just brace the rest of your body as you're locking and not so much your hand. That way you can still move. Still treat the throttle like you would your left hand as you would your right hand when you're in that switchback position. I know, easier said than done. It's a brain fuck. It saved me. It saved my ass because I have taken a digger like this before when I was learning switch hands as well. Looks like you're going pretty fast too, so... Once again, I hope you're all right. Looks like you came down pretty hard on the left side of your body, man. Grom's hurt too, man. Mini bikes hurt too. They sure as hell do. I appreciate you sending it in. And your buddy almost hit you in the back. <laughs> your buddy almost hit you in the back. Good thing you put the wheelie down and got out of the way. And it looks like the rest of the pack did a good job signaling that somebody went down. I, I need to, I need to, need to, need to emphasize how important this is in a group ride. When somebody goes down, everybody in that fucking pack, put your shit down, put that right hand up, bang those limiters, let everybody around you know that something ain't right. You know, there's, there's somebody in the middle of a fucking freeway and, and somebody could be doing a no-handed, you know, wheelie and not really see full visibility in front of them. The last thing you want to do is have him taken another nasty digger by somebody slamming into him. So, it looks like the pack did a good job of getting everyone's attention and slowing them all down. You guys make sure they do the same. I don't want to hit anybody. I don't want to get hit. Um, I don't want any of my friends to get hit. So good job on that. Let's keep it up. So guys, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk this whole time. This has been amazing. I'm literally having a blast because this is like me moto vlogging, except I don't have to worry about a crazy ass dude in a stolen uh, Kia hitting me from the left and me having to slam on the brakes when I'm talking to you or whatever. Cause yeah, a lot of times it's easy to get distracted when you're talking to yourself. I can't wait to talk to some of you guys. Drop down in the comments below what you guys want to see out of this show. I'm going to have some guests on here soon. So drop down what guests you want to see. And I can't wait to have the telephone lines open and be able to take some of these calls from you guys, you know, kind of diagnose some situations, whether it is stunt related, maintenance related, trip related, anything, man. Like what do you guys, you know, want to know? We're all here for answering all your questions. Some of these winter months in Chicago give us the time to do stuff like this and to take adventures on like the limiter. I'm really excited to see what this becomes and let us know down in the comments what you guys think of this. I know it's Christmas time, so I want to wish every single one of you guys a Merry Christmas. Know that we're thinking of you. We really do appreciate all the orders that we've gotten on Misguided over the past couple months or so in anticipation for Christmas. So we do hope a lot of you guys are unwrapping some brand new stuff from us uh, this Christmas. And I love you guys for that. If you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe. If you guys like the video, you know what to do. Give it a like. As always, guys, your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636, signing out from The Limiter. I love y'all. Peace.